I'll be, I'll be your, hang on, hang your on. breath translator. So, right. go ahead, ask a question. So, what happened there? So, yeah, holding so, rounds? Yeah, so, uh, I actually didn't watch. Um, <laughs> I was outside. So, essentially, me as Gabriel Varga, I'm just doing my thing, you know? I'm just being the best. I'm just throwing punches and throwing kicks. And what's really impressive about what I do, not that I would say this because I'm Gabriel Varga, but what's really impressive about what I do is that every single thing I do looks exactly the same as the last time that I did it. There's no variation in the punch. So like if I throw a jab, that jab looks perfect every time. I do have to say that's impressive that every kick, this is the same power. It was, it was the same amount of power. Yeah. There was no time that he like kicked and then he put his foot down even in a different place. Yeah. If you would have put like a, Precise. A, a beam on the ground like construction workers do that goes across to make sure everything's level, his foot, his knee would have touched the beam at the same place every single. My foot, sorry, my foot would have touched. No foot. My foot. My foot would have touched the beam at the same place every single time. It's like he's in here. He knows exactly what I was gonna say. That's exactly crazy. What, you're gonna say. what other questions do you have for me, as Gabriel Varga? Man, okay. So how do you practice your right kick so precise that when I feel the power, you never stop getting tired? Yeah. So that comes down to. I'm not going to kick as hard as I possibly can every single time. Mm. I, I'm probably at like 87.2% roughly because if I kick it at 100%, that's everything I have. That's true. I can't possibly control and use everything I have every single time. But what I can do is use the same amount and eventually that 87.2 break becomes through. a higher number. That's smart. I like that. That's very good. Well, thank, thank you, you so much, Gabriel. Thank You're you. You're welcome. Thank you, Sensei Seth. Please thank don't talk so to him. Oh, I'm sorry. Please don't talk to him. Okay, sorry. He's busy. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, what's going on? It's Kevin. So we're actually gonna break down all that tap pad holding. And what you're looking for is a fighter um, for your feeder and what they do for you. Yeah. And how you're able to like increase your, your skill sets and maybe polish your technique better. Mm -hmm. I know when I try to hold pads, I'm trying to be understanding what you're looking for and then holding pads on the correct position. But yeah. what are you looking for? This is important to me too, because I know a lot of people, there was a discussion going yesterday where people were saying like, what are the priorities? Mm -hmm. and, and pad work was actually down the list. But for me, I think it might've been Shane who was talking about that. But for me, pad work is the number one thing. It's the yeah. one thing that I would never give up because it has the cardio built into it. The cardio, mm -hmm. which basically is for like the equivalent of running. I can push myself that hard, but yeah. it also has the timing of sparring assuming there's a good pad holder. Yes. So the very first thing that I look for in good pad holding, well, well actually, we'll start from the beginning. The very first thing is being able to push the pad back. Yes. Because if you put your hand up, if Kevin just holds it there and I hit and I'm like that, there's no follow up for me. It would be like me hitting his head and there's nothing there. His head doesn't go like that. Mm -hmm. His head is solid. So I want to be able to hit something solid so I can move into my next shot and just keep rolling through without losing that combo. So the first thing is, is he going to push back properly? The next thing that I'm looking for to make this more like sparring, because I really feel like I could eliminate sparring yeah. from my camp, I is with that. a pad holder who can replicate my opponent. Mm -hmm. And you have to throw back at me. So if it's 100% offense on my part, like you were throwing low kicks, keeping yeah. me honest. You were throwing front kicks, yeah. keeping me honest. <laughs> That's gonna make it more like sparring. If it's just you saying, go, 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 go. I'm only doing one side of it. So mm -hmm. a good pad holder is gonna be throwing back at you. And again, that was, that's what makes it so important to me in the overall scheme of priority when you're training for a fight. Yeah, because the way I look at it is more like having a good conversation. Yes. Right, so it's like, it's not just me talking to you or you talking to me, but we're having a good conversation. We're feeding each other off the energy and looking for the next step. Yep. What I need to do to make you better and what you're trying to do to like accomplish your goal and such. Yeah, yeah. And now if you're somebody who's a little bit bigger or you have any sort of advantage in size, I really like a pad holder mm -hmm. who roughs me up. Because mm -hmm. you can go into a fight thinking like, oh, I'm gonna win this fight, it's gonna be easy, that's a terrible mindset. Yeah. And if you're never getting beaten down a little bit, mm -hmm. you never get a reality check. If you're the king of the castle at Very your gym, true. you're never gonna get beat up. So if I was holding for you or something, I say cross, sometimes my pad holders, as this comes out, they'll specifically swat at my head 
and just give me a little, little, little yeah, tap. You're gonna get hit. Yeah. It's not gonna be perfect. Yeah. And the really good tie, tie pad holders in Thailand, like as I throw my knee, you have that hand there. Yeah. With this hand, they'll hit you in the stomach. Oui, yes. At the same time, yeah. I love that. Every time I can, oh, oh. So it's not just, oh, I feel awesome. So yeah, you're gonna get hit as you deliver a strike. I love that aspect. I love when you see Super Bond getting swept. Yes. Pad holders, like Go you were there. Yeah. 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 So he's coming up and then, whoa, and then you fall swept. down. And yeah, you're going to get thrown, you're going to get swept. Make pad holding as close to the fight as it can possibly be. That's the priority number one for me, pretty much. That's that's what 100% agree on, which is a lot of people look at, oh, tap, tap at holding, you're just getting workout done. Yeah. That's it. To me, that's like exactly what he says. It's like you, you look at this as so many different perspectives. If you do it right, it's like sparring. Yeah. We have a conversation, we don't need to speak, right? We don't have to, unless the only time that I really appreciate the one additional element of pad work mm -hmm. is I have you looking on, mm -hmm. making corrections. Yes. yes. So this is an additional thing. If, if he says nothing to me, mm -hmm. or he at least doesn't make an indication that I'm doing something wrong, like, yeah, you don't have to talk. But if I'm, if I'm flaring my elbow every time I jab, he needs to be like... Keep your elbows down. Yeah, he needs to tell me. So I have mock sparring, I have cardio, I can work on my defense, and I have this guy making corrections. It's everything, everything yeah. I need in one for me. That is super awesome. So now you've had four of us hold mitts for you. Rank us oh no. one oh through no. four. I know I'm not getting involved in this conversation. <laughs> I, know, I, th I think Mike has something to add too, right? I, my question for Gabriel is, because my opinion, when he says that pad holding to him is the most important, is your level of experience informing that decision? Because there's a certain point. I wonder for a, you know, if we've got maybe a more novice or a beginner. Yeah. yeah. You have context. Yes. yes. Why can we light spar? You don't. We don't need to do hard sparring. Why? Because we've had our brains battered around a bunch of times. We know what that feels like. That's true. So. Yes. It, yes. Do you think that maybe your level of experience could inform, like, if you were less experienced, you didn't have all these fights, yep. maybe the sparring would become more important. Yes. 100%. I mean, sparring for me, I still don't eliminate sparring because mm -hmm. it's more of a confidence thing for me. If I go yeah. into a fight not sparring, I'm like, oh, did I do enough? Like, there's that thing. But I feel like if I didn't have that lack, that little lack of confidence, I could do without it. Yeah. But yes, you're 100% right. Um, anybody who's newer, this should not be the only thing you can, you're can you doing. And there's a lot that can go wrong mm -hmm. in pad work, especially because most of the time when you're doing pad work, it's not your... Your, your, your coach holding for you, a lot of times it's you partnering up with somebody else at your gym. And this is the way we have to do it in classes. Some people don't know how to hold a pad. Yeah, they don't know how to hold pads. They're learning, they're, they're making their own mistakes. So if you have a high level pad holder, that's fantastic. If you have somebody who's like a nine out of 10, I can deal with it. When we start going down to like eight out of 10, seven out of 10, then I start going, oh, okay, maybe I'd rather do partner drilling. If I get with somebody who's brand new, I'm like, mm -hmm. it's, a wait, it's an absolute waste of my time yeah. so for me. Out. Uh, which for which one of us was the, the no, 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 Yeah, I was no, gonna no, say yeah. Yeah, which one? Which one of us? <laughs> <laughs> well It wouldn't to... hurt my feelings if you gave them all like less than me. <laughs> so it almost feels like to me, at least my personal opinion, pie hold pat like holding pads is separate arts. It is a separate art. It's sep it's a separate thing that we teach if it's especially to someone who wants to get better. 100%. I tell all my classes when I'm teaching the kids, I'm like, you can be the best striker in the world, mm -hmm. or the best guy in here. That doesn't mean you're a good pad holder. Yeah. And you have a lot to learn about pad holding. Mm -hmm. You can't just go like, okay, I'm you know, a black belt who's never held and I'm gonna grab yeah. the pads and I'm gonna be awesome. No. That's why we have so many guys over in Thailand who are amazing yes. at pad holding. They, they went from fighting and then they transitioned and then they spent years learning how to hold pads well. Mm -hmm. There's an art behind it. Definitely, okay, that's great. One last question. Rate me versus Seth. Who's a better, <laughs> who's a better pie holder? He's not, he's not, he's not, he's okay, 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 okay. okay. Gabriel's costume gentleman. I will speak so for nice. him. There you go. I'll so speak for him. Um, okay, okay. And maybe if you grab some clips and post like kind of the different styles. Okay. Style wise, this is the most, you did the most traditional type of pad holding. Mm -hmm. And this is a great, if you don't know your pad man, this is the most satisfying way to do it. Mm. What Seth gave him was a, like a, a, a kind of puzzle, like a almost yeah. like one of those reaction games where you have to touch numbers or touch lights or something like that. That's very good. So that was a t it's a totally different experience. Mm. Um, I s kind of split the difference. Gabriel knows what I'm asking, but I'm also kind of like, tell me what you want to do, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to hit him more. That's and right. I was trying to trick him with a kick. Yeah. And I don't know what Shane did. I wasn't watching. <laughs> Shane, Shane did very much like yeah, you, just more traditional, yeah, more yeah. Thai, <laughs> more Thai style. He tried, 
He tried to yeah, check me. No, I spoke for him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait, no, I can do that. I mean, I liked I liked the way that you held Seth because oh, yeah. it was like you said you're going to try and replicate potentially my next opponent. Yeah, right. Yes. And it felt yeah. it, it didn't flow the way I would normally want pad work to flow. Right. But that was the whole point. Oh, when yeah. I fight, like a little, it's a little chaotic. Oh, a little yeah. Little yeah. Chaotic. You had to try. Yeah. You had to work. Yeah. As opposed to the so, person so settling. So that's why in front you liked mine the best. Is what you're saying? <laughs> oh man, I'm out of here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, all right. Thank you so much, Coach. And then if you have any questions, please leave in the comment in the section below. But I'm gonna leave the channel the link in the description below, and I'll see you guys next week. So, what was your favorite thing about being a fighter? Hmm. I actually don't like it. I actually think that beating people up is probably not fair to them because of what I know about myself and how good I am. No, that doesn't sound like something. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think?